So one of the things we are going to take a look at is how to study the structural formula below. This is a very typical sort of exam question. Um, you can definitely expect something like this in your final. In fact, I did actually take this from one of the government finals. It's kind of like super textbook. Um, it's, yeah, it's definitely in there. And uh, one of the things that you'll quickly notice is that they always kind of follow a bit of a pattern. There's uh, you know, they'll ask about naming, then homologous series, then they'll do a little bit of reactions, then some polymers. It's, it's fairly formulaic. So let's just go through these really quickly and kind of see what are some of the things that they ask. Well, you know, there it is. First question, it says the homologous series to which this molecule belongs. Okay, now a lot of people will say first you need to go through and you need to kind of like mark it off and you need to do all these exciting things like... Um, you know, name your molecule and, and do all of these things, but you really don't need to. All you need to do to find the homologous series is to go and see which part of the molecule, and that's that molecule up here, see which family it belongs to. So homologous series is actually a family. So now a family is just defined by a bunch of people that look the same, and the same thing is true for molecules. Molecules are defined by, you know, those tiny things that make them different from everything else. Now, in organic molecules, the, the, standard, uh, the standard organic molecule is a bunch of carbons all in a row and one after the other. Now, any change to that is a functional group. So what we do is we kind of take a look down our chain and go, okay, well, there's a carbon, there's another carbon, Oh, wait, there's something here that changes things. There's another carbon, there's another carbon, there's another carbon. But right in the middle, there's this. Okay, and that's something special. There's something different there from the normal carbon chain. So that is what defines the homologous series. It's a carbon double bonded to one oxygen, single bonded to another. Now, that is called a functional group called a carboxyl. Now, carboxyl groups are something which exist in carboxylic acids and in um, esters. Now, how do I tell the difference if it's a carboxylic acid or if it's in an ester? Well, if we take a look at acid-base theory, acid-base theory is all about hydrogens. Now, uh, carboxylic acids would have a hydrogen on that oxygen over there, but you can see that there isn't one, so this must be an ester. So now we're going to talk a little bit about esters in a bit, but not to worry about that. Okay, the IUPAC name. Now, sometimes they even ask you what IUPAC is. Now, this is a bunch of very accomplished chemists that kind of get together and they decide the rules for naming chemistry and how we're going to do things. So it's the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. So they are the guys that, you know, get to decide all the, the rules for all of these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little bit of space on our molecule and we're gonna, we're gonna see how to name an ester. So I hope you didn't mind me quickly erasing things while you weren't looking. Uh, that is the wonder of video. Okay, so now how to name esters is actually a little bit different to how you would usually name an organic molecule. Now that, that is to count the longest carbon chain, that is to then, uh, you know, choose a suffix like meth, eth, pro, but. Now, the problem with an ester is an ester is kind of made up of a main piece and then another piece. Now, it's not always decided by the longest carbon chain. Esters have got a little bit of a trick. What you've got to do is you've got to see which part of these, of this. So if I divide this down here, which part belongs to the carboxylic acid? and which part belong to the alcohol that made this. Now remember that an ester is made from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Now I can see that the carboxyl that we looked at earlier is on this side. So this part came from the acid and this part came from the alcohol. Okay, now here's the thing is we've got to name the acid and we've got to name the alcohol and that's going to help us name the ester. Now what you've got to remember is that the, the acid changes its name very slightly. Let's kind of take a look and see what this acid would be. Okay, so let's count some carbons inside the acid. 
So that is one, two, three, four. So that makes butte. And then uh, what we find is that they are single bonded to each other. So that is but -an. Now it wouldn't be butane because it's a carboxylic acid. So instead of that E at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is butanoic acid. So butanoic acid would be the one that goes in here. Now the alcohol is much, much easier because the alcohol is on the other side. One, two, so that is eth single bonded that is an and because it would have been at the end I would have just said ethanol so ethanol and butanoic acid have gone together to give this ester okay right now if you guys are reading a little bit ahead uh, you might have actually figured out that I'm busy answering question 2.1.3 um, and you're saying okay well you know why don't I do 2.1.2 well we can do both so what actually happens is that when butanoic acid becomes an ester it becomes butanoate. So this is butanoate. Okay, so butanoate is the ester form of butanoic acid. Now what happens is that I get a two carbon side chain hanging onto that butanoate. Now two carbon side chains, side chains always go on the front of a name. So this is ethyl. Butanoate. Now notice that there's a bit of a gap in the name and the reason that there's a gap in the name is because there is a gap in the carbon chain. So let's just highlight that. Let's just actually make dead certain that everyone's on the same page here. Here we go. So see that there is a break in the carbon chain. So ethyl butanoate. Okay, now you've got to be very careful to name the, uh, the side chain. Put it on the front and take the acid and change its name from butanoic to butanoate. Really cool thing is that means that we've actually answered one of our previous questions. So there we are. We've got uh, the IUPAC name for the organic acid used in its preparation. Oh, okay, well this is butanoic acid. Okay, butanoic acid. Awesome. Okay, so all right. Now we are gonna carry on they would like to know the structural formula of its straight, sorry, straight chain or unbranched functional isomer. Okay, uh, this is where things get a little bit tricky. We need to start taking very careful look at what they mean. They would like a structural formula. So they've given us structural formulas here, that's fine. And they would like to know um, a functional isomer. Now, a functional isomer is pretty tricky because what a functional isomer will do is it will actually change the functional group and therefore the homologous series. So if we start out with butanoic acid and we change its structure, it needs to change um, its functionality as well. So let's, let's just draw but butanoic acid first. So butanoic acid, um, sorry, excuse that for a second. Let's just clean that up. There we go. Wonderful, erase that. Okay, so butanoic acid, let's just make sure I'm drawing with the correct thing. Uh, there we go, all right. Now we're on the same page, fantastic. Okay, so butanoic acid, so uh, now but means that there are four carbons, that's one, two, three, four, and butanoic has got this lovely uh, carboxyl on the end with the hydrogen, so that's butanoic acid. Now they're saying I need to rearrange this in such a way that I need to change this into another type of molecule. Now here's what we're going to do. First of all, let's name the thing and I'll show you why we do that. So butanoic acid. We're going to change butanoic acid into not a carboxylic acid because that's what a functional isomer does. It needs to change the functional group. Now guys, there's a little bit of a trick to this. The only way that you can change this using grade 12 or high school chemistry is to start shifting where this oxygen breaks things. Because at the moment, we've got it right there at the end between a C and an H. Now here's something really cool. All we can do is keep obeying the rules, is that Watch what happens when I put that oxygen, instead of linking a hydrogen and a carbon, link a carbon and a carbon. 
like that. All of a sudden, I've got something else. Now, you can see that the carboxyl is still there, but um, you'd no longer have a carboxylic acid. There's no OH anywhere. So what we've got here now is an ester. So this is one of the things that you can write down. You can change esters into carboxylic acids as isomers. Remember the rule for an isomer is you need to keep the number of each uh, atom exactly the same. But um, you can change what they bond to. That's the really cool thing. So um, here's always the test I used to give to my grade 12s is if it really is an acid, it will have a different name. So let's practice our ester naming. Here it is. Ah, I see that there is a carboxyl group, so I need to name this thing first. So that is one carbon long. It is meth and now because it's inside an ester, remember that it's methan O8. What is the side chain? Okay, well three carbons long is the side chain onto my methanoate propyl. Now the sign of a true ester is that um, sorry, the true isomer is that it's going to be um, a different name. Uh, so guys, what I'm going to start doing is start doing a couple more of these quick exam questions. So if you like them, uh, please leave your comments below. Uh, please subscribe, so obviously you get the notifications. And guys, I've actually left a, a Google Form link. If you have a particular question that you would like answered, I find that very valuable. Uh, what I can do is then uh, you go in through the Google form, you leave your email address, uh, I'm not going to spam you, I promise. And what we will do is make sure that we answer some of your questions because then it'll be driven by you.